हेलो चिल्ड्रेन वेलकम बैक टू नाइन्थ क्लास हिस्ट्री एंड सिविक्स इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी रेड अबाउट द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द इंडियन कंस्टिट्यूशन द एनाटमेंट ऑफ इंडियन कंस्टिट्यूशन फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द कंस्टिट्यूंट असेंबली कंपोजिशन ऑफ कंस्टिट्यूंट असेंबली ऑब्जेक्टिव रिजोल्यूशन एंड ड्राफ्टिंग कमेटी टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू रीड about dr b r ambedkar he is called he is called the father of indian constitution dr b r ambedkar is called the father of indian constitution dr bhimrao ambedkar popularly known as baba saheb he was one of the architect of the constitution of india he was an eminent jurist economics politician and a social reformer the constitution prepared by dr b r ambedkar provided for constitutional guarantees and protection for a wide range of civil liberties for the individual citizen including freedom of religion abolition of untouchability social rights for women and a system of reservation for job in the government services for the members of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes freedom of religion means the people are free to follow their own religion there is no restriction for any particular religion then abolition of untouchability in that period in the society indian society the caste division was there the uh, people those who are in the bottom part of the society they are tortured by the others they are called the untouchable so they are tortured by the other three groups that's why it gives the uh, it provide the um, abolition of untouchability in that time the women are considered as the inferior to the men that's why our constitution provide the social uh, rights for the women and the system of reservation for the uh, uh, the members of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes because these people are and the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe peoples are uh, in the they are backward in the society that's, that's why the reservation is given to the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes dr ambedkar incorporated the following principle in the constitution of india making the indian constitution workable flexible and strong enough to hold the country together both in peace and war that means the uh, constitution is strong enough to um, maintain the unity and integrity of the nation second point providing special safeguard to the minorities and certain classes who are socially and educationally backward the situation is totally different when i when we got our independence some people in the society they are educational and socially backward so to bring them off and the constitution provides some special provision for this group those are socially and educationally backward third point is incorporating the right to the constitutional remedies to ensure that the fundamental rights of the individual are not infringed by the central and the state government we are enjoying some fundamental rights the six fundamental rights are given by or provided by the constitution should not the central government neither the central government nor the state government can violate this rights fourth point is single citizenship single judiciary and uniformity in the fundamental rights to integrate indian society he provided uh, in the constitution the single citizenship so that our integrity will be maintained fifth point incorporating directive principle to ensure the social and economic democracy and welfare of the people of india it means part four of our indian constitution the directive principle of the state policy is there it uh, it is just a guideline for the state government and the central government according to directive principle uh, both the government they perform their duties their functions now reading of the constitution the draft was discussed by the constituent assembly clause by clause the first reading was november 4 1948 the second reading was on october 17 1949 and the third reading was november 26 1949 
to frame the constitution it took 2 years 11 months and 17 days when our constitution was signed uh, it is consisted of 395 articles and 8 schedules implementation of constitution the constitution was adopted and passed by the constituent assembly on november 26 1949 and it is came into force from january 26 1950 when the constitution came into force c rajgopal chari became the governor general and he replaced lord mountbatten the constituent assembly became the provincial parliament until the new general election were held in 1951 and 52 and dr rajendra prasad was the president of constituent assembly he also became the president of indian union significance of january 26 why the date is chosen to enforce the constitution because because of its historical importance it was on the date january 26 1929 that the lahore session of indian national congress for the first time uh, given the call of purna swaraj or complete independence so till 1929 to 1947 26 january is celebrated as the independence day and achieving independence 15 august 1947 became the independence day and january 26 became republic day after 1950 january uh, 1950 january 26 the um, constitution was enforced and that day is became the republic day we are celebrating republic day in, in 26 january so this is the significance of 26 january as in the same day 26 january 1929 the lahore session of indian national congress it was declared the purna swaraj or complete independence so that's why it it chosen uh, to enforce the constitution on the same day to remember the day so we have completed the chapter here uh, thank you